the interview he is John L. McLaughlin, Captain, service number 080946, United States Marine Corps. The interviewer is Stephen G. Hadlock, Sergeant, service number 2164653, United States Marine Corps Reserve. The interview took place at Camelot Hill Combat Base, Quang Tri Province, Republic of Vietnam, on 24 March 1968. The subject of this interview is the North Vietnamese Army attempt to lure Marines of L Company of the 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines, into an ambush. Classification is confidential. My name is Captain John L. McLaughlin, commanding officer of Lima Company, 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines. On the morning of 4 March 1968, I started a sweep from Camlo District Headquarters, north of the Camlo River, planning to uh, complete the patrol route north of Hill 46. I dispatched one platoon with a mortar, 60 millimeter mortar squad, and a machine gun squad 15 minutes in advance of the main body to secure the river crossing uh, across Cram Camlo River. At about 0645 on the morning of the 4th, the remainder of the company consisting of the second platoon of Lima Company, a squad of machine guns, the company command group uh, followed in trace of this uh, leading platoon, which was the first platoon, crossed Camlo River and passed through the uh, first platoon and swept a village just to the north. The second platoon then set up a supporting position on the northwest edge of the village while the Second platoon swept through, swept the second village. We continued this uh, process through three villages. From the third village uh, to the west, we swept the first platoon north and seized Hill 46. The platoon then set in a 360-degree perimeter on the western slope uh, western uh, portion of Hill 46, while the <coughs> second platoon moved from their supporting position to the northeast and began a swept sweep across what we called Hill 30 toward our position on Hill 46. Uh, once their sweep had begun, I displaced the mortar people to the uh, reverse side of uh, the southern slope of Hill 46 to support uh, both the uh, first platoon in position and the sweep of the second platoon uh, sweeping from east to west. Soon after, the platoon and the mortars were in position on Hill 46 and the second platoon was well along in its sweep. I had gotten my platoon, uh, command group to the hill and was conducting a visual reconnaissance of the remainder of our route, which was about uh, another 1,500 meters to the north before we began our swing toward the uh, east. At that time, I was informed that uh, to my south west, Marines had sighted six, f excuse me, five NVA uh, moving out of the stream bed on my east uh, into some thick growth. We immediately engaged with small arms fire, M79, <coughs> M60 machine guns, the 60 millimeter mortar <coughs> uh, squad fired, and an artillery mission was called in on the stream bed and on the thick brush to uh, my southwest. As we took these five under contact, my western flank, or left flank, in relation to the direction of movement, reported six NVA moving in directly on our west. Uh, they were engaged with small arms, and both groups of NVA uh, disappeared in the brush, and we uh, did not have an opportunity to uh, see them again. As the platoon was, second platoon was sweeping toward me from the east, I ordered them to swing to the north of Hill 46, redeploy, <coughs> and sweep due south through the thick vegetation uh, along the stream bed to uh, engage enemy force and check the results of uh, uh, our engagement. At approximately 
approximately this time, it was somewhere around 0930. We received what we estimated to be four rounds of 82 millimeter um, mortar fire. The company was well, uh, the platoon was well dispersed. However, the initial rounds uh, landed in close proximity to a machine gun position and to one of the 60 millimeter mortar uh, tubes. As we called counter battery fire through the artillery net, we continued sweeping the second platoon toward our position. Uh, counter battery artillery was fired. We continued to see, receive uh, in salvos of four or five rounds, 82 millimeter mortar. Initial casualties appeared to be one Marine killed and three wounded. The second platoon continued their sweep. I had still not made the decision to withdraw from the hill. But due to the enemy force to my left flank and uh, left rear, uh, our route of withdrawal could have been interdicted, so the original plan seemed to be uh, the one offering the best uh, possibilities, even if we did decide to withdraw toward the south. I was in contact with a battalion uh, commander who uh, cautioned not to be drawn any further out until we had the situation developed and had control of it. During this time, we had received uh, up to about 40 rounds of incoming 82-millimeter uh, mortar fire. The second platoon got in position, dropped off one squad, <coughs> and taking two squads, swept around my western flank and began their attack through the brush line to the south to open uh, uh, the withdrawal route. As they moved, we continued to receive the incoming. Casualties uh, were beginning to mount. It became obvious that uh, to proceed north from Hill 46 would put us in the uh, valley uh, where the artillery uh, was probably registered, and that the fact that of enemy to my left rear and rear, uh, they evidently had planned to occupy Hill 46, uh, cutting off my withdrawal to the uh, south. I decided then to uh, with, withdraw with my wounded. I ordered the second platoon to continue its sweep to the stream to my due south, about 900 to 1,000 meters south of uh, my position, and establish a secure LZ on the north side of that stream. I ordered the first platoon to leave its machine guns in position to cover the western flank and to collect the casualties and withdraw off the southwest slope of the hill, uh, drop in trace of the second platoon, uh, and establish casualty collection point in the LZ. My weapons platoon commander and first platoon commander were in charge of this evacuation. I positioned myself uh, on the southwest slope of Hill 46 so that I could control the maneuver of the second platoon and could supervise the casual evacuation. From my position, I had visual contact with both uh, the sweeping platoon and the platoon picking up the casualties. The casualties were collected and started on a line of drift, generally south. I moved over and moved them back toward the southwest slope. Uh, the 82 rounds seemed to be coming in uh, more to the center of Hill 46, and I wanted to move off of a line, off of this, uh, what appeared to me to be a gun target line for this 82 uh, uh, mortar position. The casualties were carried down. By this time, uh, casualties had mounted. The initial casualties were taken down. Two squads secured the LZ. We established stretcher uh, parties and continued to send them back up on the hill. By this time, casualties had mounted to over 50% of the companies of the two platoon strength. We uh, continued to take casualties. All of the casualties were sustained on Hill 46. The big majority of the casualties were uh, sustained in our evacuation effort. I sent uh, the platoon commanders, uh, Sergeant Pettit and 
uh, Lieutenant Sergo came down with the initial groups and they took bearers back up to the hill. They started, uh, they got all the casualties they could see, both uh, Sergeant Pettit and Lieutenant Sergo swept the area of Hill 46 visually and physically, collecting all the weapons and all the bodies that they had observed. Their other members of the stretcher parties had also checked the area and could not find any additional casualties. All of this was done under constant uh, enemy mortar and artillery uh, fire. Uh, during this evacuation, my position about halfway between the uh, crest of the hill and the uh, <coughs> LZ, we received sniper rounds from what we believe to be the original five NVA sighted. We got uh, a, about eight Marines and PFs and positioned them along the route of, route of withdrawal uh, facing toward the west to cover this position. We took no casualties from this fire. However, uh, the casualty bearers uh, were forced to stop, take cover, until such time as we could get fire to, to bear on this uh, enemy threat. Evacuation continued. I started back up the hill and met Lieutenant uh, Sargo and uh, Sergeant Pettit. I checked with them if they were sure that all the cruiser weapons and all the uh, casualties had been evacuated. They said that to the best of their knowledge, they had checked the area thoroughly as best they could under the uh, constant shelling and that they were certain that there were no casualties left. I contemplated going on up the hill by myself uh, and I was advised that uh, little would be served at this time if I went up uh, on the hill and uh, was killed or injured they'd have to send people back up to, to bring me down uh, possibly resulting in more casualties. With this uh, squad covering the western flank, uh, pulled back into the LZ. Uh, during the withdrawal, we had received what I had originally believed to be friendly supporting fire in the villages that we had swept early in the morning to the east of my position. Uh, we later believed this to be the rockets, or at least uh, fairly heavy artillery. It came from generally the northwest uh, side. We got into the LZ, the PS, and the Marines were in a 360 degree perimeter. The head corpsman and the uh, tune guides had established uh, weapons collection points, which I personally saw that we had the cruiser weapons. We were missing one M60. When questioned, I found that it had taken a direct hit on Hill 46 and had been uh, destroyed. The, all the other cruiser weapons were there. The casualty collection point was well organized. The corpsman was establishing priorities. My uh, forward uh, air controller had been hit uh, in the shelling, and one of my extra radio operators, Corporal Grand Jean, uh, had taken the uh, air control net and was requesting an emergency medevac. We remained in this position for some time. The first helicopters came in. The stretcher bearers were organized. They took the more critical casualties, uh, started loading them on the helicopters. I was moving around the perimeter and about this time had received word of an possible NVA company in the stream to my west and that they were possibly moving to cut off my withdrawal. The initial helicopter that came in received incoming mortar fire approximately 200 meters to the north, four rounds. He stayed on the ground as long as possible, collected as many casualties as he could, and then left. The second helicopter came in and again received incoming. <clears throat> this forced me to move the casualties and weapons from uh, uh, the tree line where I had the collection points into defilade on the northern bank of the stream bed. There was a 
two helicopter uh, lifts were affected. Uh, we got a, a helicopter passing by the area, came up on our frequency and asked if we uh, needed assistance. Uh, we told him that we did need additional medevacs. Uh, we also told him that we were receiving incoming. Uh, he said he was coming in anyway, and he, in fact, did so. Uh, it's this third helicopter came in. It also received incoming, each round being walked successively closer until the last rounds were only about 75 meters from our position. As the third helicopter cleared, I ordered one squad of the second platoon to sweep south crossing the stream and across the uh, flatlands toward the northern bank of the Camlo River, uh, sweeping ahead of us. First platoon again picked up what casualties and weapons we had remaining on position. I organized a squad uh, for rear security to cover our position as we withdrew in order to withdraw about 400 500 meters further south. This withdrawal was uh, effected as the sweeping squad got into position, established the LZ. The casualty uh, evacuation uh, continued until all weapons and casualties were removed. I then uh, took personal command of the rear guard, swept the area, picked up any remaining uh, weapons, and withdrew uh, to the new LZ. Uh, there was evidently other contact in the area today, and medevac choppers were uh, not available at this time. We remained in position for some time, reorganized. Uh, we again received incoming, uh, moving steadily south. Uh, it was well away from our position. Uh, about 15 minutes after we vacated the first LZ, uh, enemy mortar rounds did impact in that LZ. After waiting some time, I decided to withdraw to the northern bank of the Camlo River. Uh, the withdrawal was effected in the same manner, one squad sweeping and crossing the river and establishing security on the south bank. The stretcher bearers moving in between, and I took personal command of the rear guard, uh, withdrew uh, to the LZ once the casualties were uh, in position and set up a new 360-degree perimeter. From this uh, third LZ on the northern bank, we <coughs> again requested helicopters. Uh, again, none were available. They were uh, committed in other areas. We received word that the uh, Ryan Ladder Bravo, the personnel from the district headquarters, had a vehicle which they had moved from their position to the village uh, to my south. Uh, one of the Platoon sergeants with the uh, PF unit had become separated, and as the PFs uh, reached the river, they had uh, broken, leaving he, uh, the platoon sergeant, uh, one wounded man, and his radio operator alone. They went back to Cap 1, uh, picked up some personnel from Cap 1, some stretchers, and uh, withdrew and rejoined us at the north bank of the Camlo River. It became apparent that the obvious course of action then was to continue withdrawal uh, across the Camelot River and withdraw to where the vehicles were waiting to pick up our wounded. Ordered the evacuation <coughs> across the river. I placed my rear guard squad on the uh, and defilade on the northern bank of the river as the last casually was going across, which was the one KIA, was going across the river. We again received what we estimated to be artillery fire, possibly 85 or 75 pack howitzer. One round landed about 10 meters, 25 meters up on the northern bank. Second round hit the edge of the northern bank of the Camelot River to my left flank of my squad. And the third round impacted in the uh, Camelot River. I ordered the squad to move to the east, remaining in depth on the bank. We moved about 600 meters to the east as the last 
Whitey Bear has continued uh, moving due south. We then crossed Camelot River and moved over to intercept the uh, stretchers. Enemy artillery fire continues across the Camelot River all the way up uh, to the edge of the village which we were entering uh, to meet the truck. The last body was met by uh, Marines who were returning and they had picked up some two-wheel carts from the Vietnamese. We loaded our last KIA remaining weapons we had picked up and uh, continued to move up the road trucks, broke into two columns, one moving toward the east into Camelot District and the other one moving south and around into Camelot District Headquarters. We returned to Camelot District Headquarters about 15.30, began uh, at that time assessment casualties, appeared that uh, had at the time six missing, one KIA, and 42 medivacs. This is including those that had gone out on helicopters. We continued uh, the reorganization. Uh, weapons checks were put in to find out uh, the extent of our losses. We, uh, because of the Incoming fire, uh, the fact that we had to shift people, uh, we weren't able to count for all of our personnel uh, initially. Uh, it did become apparent that we had left uh, six people in the field. Uh, Colonel Bendell was at Camelot District Headquarters.
Air flights overflew the area, located uh, uh, the enemy, uh, the bodies, Marine bodies, and a two-company operation uh, was conducted on the 13th, in which Indian Kilo moved uh, north of Camlo River. Uh, Indian Company establishing uh, position to the north of Hill 46. Kilo Company with tanks then swept in from the west. I crossed Camlo River from the south, moved through uh, the second village, linked up with Kilo Company, and then began sweeping uh, west toward the stream with Kilo Company on Hill 46. And I was sweeping uh, perpendicular to my withdrawal uh, route to uh, pick up any equipment that had remained behind and to make sure that uh, the bodies were there. As we approached, as we crossed my withdrawal route and appro approached the stream to the west, we came under an estimated eight rounds of what I said was rocket, what was later believed to be uh, artillery fire. A kilo Company with tanks on Hill 46 came under 82 millimeter mortar fire. Uh, by this time, the tanks and Kilo Company with their engineers had reached four of the Marine bodies. They swept the area for possible booby traps and recovered four of the bodies, mounted them on tanks, and began their withdrawal. I remained in position until the word came to withdraw again to the south. I brought my forces back over the exact withdrawal route uh, that I had followed on the 4th. Uh, we found no additional bodies. And uh, the only equipment we found was some uh, destroyed uh, cartridge belt and uh, two gas masks, which we picked up and uh, brought in with us. We received no fire as we crossed the river. <coughs> I then again co contacted the district chief, Dairi Rao, on the possibility of sending civilians again to Hill 46 to locate the two missing bodies. It was not clear at that time whether they had been removed, whether they had been buried, or whether they were not in fact uh, with the other four. He agreed to do this. Uh, he asked that I provide him with uh, two ponchos and two gas masks, which I did. The report I received was that they sent two civilians who volunteered to go back for the reward up to the hill, and they located two bodies about 25 meters to the north of where uh, the original, the four bodies were recovered. They went in the next day then and made the attempt. Uh, evidently what they did was they took the gas mask, some insecticide I'd given them, uh, and the ponchos, went up, collected the two bodies, put them on uh, bamboo poles, and then came south to the Camlo River, where uh, OPs from Cap 1, or uh, Combined Action Platoon 1, could observe them. As soon as they were certain that they had been seen by Cap 1, they laid the poles with the bodies down. Marines from Cap 1 went out, retrieved the bodies, brought them into their position, notified me, I dispatched my vehicle, uh, picked them up, and sent them back to Dong Ha for positive identification. We then uh, contacted our Sierra 5 and paid a 4,000 piaster reward for the recovery of, two, of the two bodies. This was uh, paid on a rate of 2,000 piasters per individual involved. 